This 26 Sports High School Basketball presentation is presented by Cadillac Casting Incorporated. And welcome back, Cadillac High School, Jay Simon and Kevin Gregory. Three quarters in the books. And the fourth quarter about to start as the Cadillac Vikings turned a four-point halftime deficit into a one-point lead as the final eight minutes coming upon us. And you mentioned at the end of that third quarter, Kevin, that if you're the Wildcat coaching staff, you want to get out and run a little more in that second half. Right now, though, the Vikings are making a living at the free throw line as they've been able to get it down low, draw fouls. Unofficially, 14 of 19 from the line through three quarters, whereas the Wildcats just two of 10 from the charity wow. stripe. Yeah, I mean, they want to get on run. We've talked about it all game long. But listen, if Cadillac smartened up at halftime, which clearly they did, and they put a spy on the person that's flying, well, you just you physically cannot throw that full court pass if it's not there. And so take away that eight or 10 points in the first half that they got off of it and might have been a, a different score at halftime. Brooke Cunningham called for the walk. So it'll be Wildcat basketball. Oh, little spin move high off the glass by Jasmine Schultz. That's, Pretty. Uh, that's usually a next level spin move. When <laughs> I say next level, I mean NBA, where you can get away with anything. That is a nice move. Allen gets a tip. Hustle. Allen stays with it, 15-footer. And the rebound pulled down by Christensen, and Emmington keeps the dribble. Hope Emmington to Johns, baseline. And Johns loses the handle. Thought she might take that 14-footer. Allen quickly behind the Vikings' defense. Can't finish, good hustle by Alexis Little. Allen gets it back, however. Oh, rejected by Christensen. And the lefty jumper from Jessica Marweed is good. Boy, Morgan Allen, she should eat well the rest of the week. You know why, Jay? She been taking lunch money all game. <laughs> that girl picking pockets, taking names. <laughs> 6.35 to go here in the game. Emmington, three ball. Here comes Jor, two on two here. Smith. Good looking jumper, Alexis Smith wide open. And both head coach Mary Kay Johns and Kevin Gregory up here think a timeout is in order. And Mary Kay is out of 30 seconds, so this will be a full timeout. Yeah, it's a good timeout. Uh, Clock continues to run, and now it has stopped. So they'll have to put a little bit of time back on the clock, some discussion from the officials. That's a good timeout. I mean, that's not the way you want to start the fourth quarter for Cadillac. You made that push in the third quarter. Caught all the way back up, took a one-point lead into the fourth. What happens? A couple fast breaks, a couple turnovers. Next thing you know, blink your eyes and Alpina's and they're shooting. They're up five. Well, they're doing exactly what you said they should get back to, and that was getting out on leaks, transitioning. Allen, Morgan Allen, who uh, should be accosted for larceny <laughs> right about now being the one that's uh, gotten this going. She doesn't have any of the buckets in this quarter, but she has helped spur on these Wildcats. 6-0 run to start this quarter has put them up by five. We are just underway. Curious to see how much time they put on the clock when we come out of this timeout here. Should be about 6-11. I thought that it, well, no, it ran was, down to 6-11. It should be, no, a, I'm thinking 6 40. Oh, that's way too much. It, it wasn't running that long after the timeout was called. Well, we're going to start over. It's eight minutes. Yeah. <laughs> they'll, they'll get it straight. Redo. They'll get it straight. When I looked up, it was like 6.07, and it hadn't been more than five, six seconds. So, I mean, if, if they go 6.20, which is what it looks like they're trying to do, and they will. You're so smart, Jay. Even that seems that's why, little... That's why you are what you are, Jay. <laughs> Best play-by-play -play in the history of the game. <laughs> Emmington out of the timeout. Kleinsorge now on the floor with four fouls. Dealing with a trap, and we're going to get a timeout. As Coach Johns with nothing but fulls remaining, I believe unofficially she should only have one timeout left. 
which is troublesome with over six minutes to go in a close game. Yep, and so right now she's on a knee, and that's what she's telling her girls. Listen, I got one left. I got to save it at least for under two minute and a half to go in case we need it. You girls are going to have to play through some stuff right now. Got to dig yourself out of a hole if you get into it. Right now, coming out of this timeout, it's our ball. It's imperative we at least get a great shot up. You know, preferably it goes in, we can cut into this lead, but we have to get some good looks the rest of the game. It's all about getting shots up on the rim, isn't it? Yep. Five point Wildcat lead in this timeout. Well, as, as one of our buddies, Johnny Mack, says, you can't score if you don't shoot, right? That's right. It's one of my favorite things about playing pickup basketball with the skinny little ski bunny is when a, a team passes the ball around the horn for more than 10, 15 seconds, and he starts yelling about, are we going to play basketball? Are you going to shoot? He gets so frustrated with that. Well, he thinks anything more than three passes is the North Carolina Four Corners <laughs> from 1972. <laughs> Johnny Mack in the house, coaching some elementary school basketball, the future of Cadillac Viking girls basketball. Yeah, Coach Mary Kay John started that program, and uh, and I think we've talked about it before. I don't know if on air or not, but they had uh, 10 or 12 girls trying out at the 8th and ninth grade level. They start this younger kid program, and I think they had about 30 girls try out at the younger level. So you're getting a bigger pool to draw from by starting that starting the girls younger, and so you see them running around at halftime of the big kids' games, and it's just cool to see. Kylie Christensen with an absolute textbook elbow hook to get herself into the paint, and I don't say that like it's a bad thing. I say that because it was a beautiful move, and she got fouled in the lane. We'll go to the line 4-2. Got a Viv McMahon sighting up here in the balcony. I'll give the kid a shout-out. God, got jumped from behind. I was about to, <laughs> about to do something. To, no. <laughs> Did she not read what it's about the camera crew only? Well, she's in kindergarten. I'm not sure if she can read. <laughs> Christensen misses the second but gets her own rebound. We're going to get our 74th jump ball of the game. 75. And I don't mean that derisively. That, that's just great defense. Both of these teams, good hands, and they have played some excellent defense. As Klein Sorge, three ball, too strong. Hope Emmington skying for the rebound. And Little comes up with it. And now she's going to get fouled as Allen comes over. And you know, and that's a great her. point, Jay. Uh, that, is, that is good play by both teams. And, and kudos to the refs, because you could probably call a slap foul on either team on every one of those jump balls. So instead of doing that, it's called jump ball. And let the arrow be where the arrow be. Yep. Johns, Klein Sorge thought about it. One dribble, puts it up, front rim, and it should be off. Nope, we're gonna get a foul, I think, on the Wildcats going over the back. So that's gonna be the sixth on Alpina. Next one will put the Vikings into the bonus, and they have made a killing at the line in this game. They would love nothing more than to get back into this with the clock stopped. Little trying to find Johns, and she loses the handle. Five and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Four-point lead for the Wildcats. Jor to Smith. In the middle, high arcing shot attempt from Schultz is off the mark. And here comes Emmington. Klein Sorge playing with those four fouls. They come out on Johns right away. You can see the respect for the jumper. Emmington blows by the defender up and off the glass. Thought she might get the harm and the hoop, but she the lefty layup, that was impressive. Yeah, crowd looking for an and one there. Didn't get the call, and on the other end, gets a cheap reachy. It's a two-point Wildcat lead, 4.54 on the clock here in the fourth. Foul is called on Hope Emmington, and that is her fourth. And that's big as well, because there's your primary ball handler who has to take a seat for at least a minute or two. Wildcats will try to take advantage. Allen gave up her dribble. Jor against Little. Jor into the paint. Nice look across the lane for Zuris. Kick out for Smith. Leaves it short, but Jor pulls the rebound down. 
Wildcats taking the air out of the ball a bit. Dezuris with the weak side rebound, can't finish. Seaver, the sophomore, the attempt on the other end, and now we're gonna get a foul on Shelby Seaver, the sophomore, and that is going to send the Vikings to the line for a one-on-one -on -one situation. Yeah, 90 feet away from, from your bucket, you don't wanna be reaching in down there. Especially with the percentage that Cadillac shoot from the free throw line tonight, as you mentioned, so a little break for them. 15 of 20 from the line for the Vikings tonight. Little though too strong on the one and one. Wildcats immediately running off the miss. Smith stops, pops. Another rip down rebound by Kylie Christensen. There's a near steal. Christensen crushes her own player going after it. Kleinsorge I think took a shot to the head from Christensen. And I don't know what the call was there. I was watching Klein so just make sure she was all right. Yeah, I was too. I think it's going to be Wildcat basketball. I think they called a jump ball. I think. <laughs> well, hey, when in doubt, that was a good, a good call. Boy, Kylie Christensen. I would not want to arm wrestle that young lady. She is tough. Hey, you know, I mean, it's just been that kind of game. With a ton of tie-ups, a lot of hands on the ball on both sides. So, you know, how do you avoid that? You rip it, and that's what she's been doing. Piles with the steal. And Little gets her shot partially blocked. Liz Piles has been all over the place tonight for the Vikings. Inside four minutes to go in the game. Here's that final four minute segment, KG. This is it, this is crunch time. Smith, three ball, in and out. And Christensen with probably her 40th rebound of the night. And we're gonna oh. get another jump ball. Yeah. That'll stay Viking basketball. I know you find that a little bit frustrating because there's two hands reaching in. Kylie's ripping that ball around. It's, it's tough to say that you're getting that ball clean without fouling, but you got to give the officials credit tonight. They have been consistent with that. They have not called cheap ones terribly often in those situations. As Christensen misses one from the right post, and now we're going to get a foul on Christensen. And, 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 and I, think if you're, I think if you're Mary Kay Johns right now, Boy, it's hard to. <laughs> That's an ironic. It's, it's hard to verbalize this. I know exactly. I know exactly what you want to say. I know exactly what you want to say. You got you got your girl on one end, you know, and it appeared there's two green jerseys around her, uh, trying to get a hand on the ball. Okay, no problem. We're gonna get a strong rebound. If we get a jump ball, we get a jump ball. You try and do the same thing on the other end, and you don't get called. That's frustrating. But you know what? Sometimes, what you think is a call going against you just gives you an opportunity to overcome that. That's all. Seaver makes the first of the one-on-one -one situation. That is my best effort to put a positive spin. <laughs> Misses the second, Klein Sorge with the rebound. Well, and I wonder too if sometimes, in all seriousness, these, these referees are human, they have their own tendencies. You know that they switch positions you know, on, on either end. Maybe it's a situation where, as the Vikings turn it over on this end, where you have one official on the baseline on one end and a different official on the baseline on another, and you just, you never know. It's, as I said, and I mean it genuinely, it is it one is, of the two yes. hardest jobs in the world, and it I want is. nothing to do with it. So It is a very difficult I give job. these gentlemen a lot of credit, and ladies that, that officiate basketball, I give them a lot of credit. Three-point game, three minutes to go here in the fourth. Wildcats trying to hold on. There's a nice-looking jumper. Jessica Marweed does not get off the ground very high with that lefty jumper, but she has been on the money all night long, and she gives her team a five-point lead. They set some very firm picks at the free throw line, Alpina does, on the other offensive side. Klein Sorge with the missed jumper, and the crowd, as loud as I've heard them all night, does not like that call. They felt that went off of Alexis Smith. That was a tough one from our angle. Looked like it might have gone off Smith's shoulder, but again, you got to make that call quickly. Jor looking for somebody, and Kelly Miko calls a timeout for the Wildcats with 2.26 remaining in the ball game. Wildcats lead by five. I believe they do have a 30 second timeout remaining, and that's what they're going to call. Well, you got 2.26 to go, and you're down five. What are you drawing up in the huddle? Well, for me, still a lot of time. It's only a five-point game, two, most likely three-possession 
ball game. You're on defense right now. Your goal, try and get a quick kit. Maybe Cadillac comes out in their in their man-to-man. -man. Maybe they trap out of it. Try and put a little pressure on the guards and see if they can't get a quick steal. On the other end of the floor, I say keep doing what you're doing. They're getting good looks. They're getting a lot. They're not they're not hitting a ton, but they're not taking terrible shots down there. So you, you want to draw something up for Christensen on the block? Maybe Michaela Johns flashing in the middle for the little 12-foot jumper that she's so good at. And you still have that one time out in your back pocket that they've been able to bank for this last four or five minutes. Well, and you got to wonder, too, with 2.26 to go in a very, very physical game, and Alpina has a much deeper bench. If the Vikings might not just be wearing down a touch here at this point. We'll see what they got left in the tank. Marweed's jumper is off the mark. Smith with the rebound. Back to Marweed from the paint. And Christensen pulls it away. Vikings get the stop they needed. They trail by five. Alpina looking to stay within shouting distance to TC Central in the conference race. There's a nice no look from Klein Sorge to Johns. Emmington, three ball. The bank is open. Hope Emmington with a huge three pointer cuts it to two with a minute 55 to go. And there's a near poke away by Little. That was only a half Johnny Mac. She did not put an arm right. on the shoulder. She used right. the opposite hand. So right. that was, that's a half Johnny Mac. And as I always say, it's in the handbook. You either get one friendly roll off the rim or one bank shot a game when you're at home. That, that's just how it goes. It's just how it goes. It's a rule. Well, and if that's the case, head coach Mary Kay John's probably very happy with that particular bank shot. That was huge. The the sophomore, Emma Jor, yep, with a huge free throw. Front end of the one and one She's a sophomore, huh? Yep. Yeah. The guard future is bright in Alpina. Yeah, she's got a great handle, and she makes it a two-possession game. Wildcats have struggled from the line all night, but they're three of four here in the fourth quarter. Minute 40 to go in the game. Got to attack the seams. Down wow. low to Christensen. Nice little drop step. Lefty is good. Tough entry pass, yes. but Christensen with the catch. She is solid with both hands with that move on the block. I have a feeling the last minute and a half, they're going to have to attack off the dribble, passing around the perimeter. Too many active hands if you're Alpina. Nice look there for Seaver, but she can't drain it. And the Vikings come down, trailing by two with a minute 13 to go in the game. Emmington, Little in the baseline, finds Christensen inside. Johns for 14, back iron, and Jor with a big rebound. And Johns looked like she was trying to foul her, but they don't get the call. That's 55 seconds no. to go. And that's no. going to send Klein Sorge. That's Klein Sorge's fifth, and it's going to send her to the bench. But And I, I can see the frustration on you, Kevin, but at this point, with 54 seconds left, you got to follow. Yeah, yeah, no, Somebody you, has yeah. to. Has to put him on the line, do a one-on-one. And, one. and to Michaela Johns' credit, she was trying to follow down here. That was clear. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll see if uh, the uh, backcourt counterpart for Alpina can do her job and extend this lead to a two-possession game. A couple of cuts, free throws coming up here. Morgan Allen has been relatively quiet since early in the third. She hit a three. She has not scored since. She's been making her presence known defensively. Very disruptive. We'll see if she can extend this Wildcat lead. They lead by two with 54 ticks on the clock. Coaches Miko and McCourt for the Wildcats doing a little offense defense substitution because they can as Allen drains the first. I think you said two for 10 in the first half from the line. Much better job. Thing. Through three quarters, two for oh, 10. Oh, wow, okay. Much better job at crunch time for Alpina. Alpina will call a full timeout. Well, they're no doubt setting up off of a make or a miss here. A uh, little token pressure if it's a miss. Uh, and if they make it, I would uh, expect some full court pressure um, for Alpina. Kind of putting a little pressure on Cadillac, not letting them bring the ball up and, and get into their sets. So late in the game, the more time it takes them to cross half court, the less time they have to catch you, right? Yep. This is a big free throw coming up for Morgan Allen, the senior. If she drains it, Wildcats make it a two-possession game. If not, 
The Vikings have the ability. Kylie Christensen can hit threes. We know Michaela Johns can hit threes. Hope Emmington has shown an ability to hit Tim Duncan-like bank threes. So there are shooters on this Viking roster. Maybe the bank's still open, you never know. Got a Todd Hamlet sighting in the crowd, head coach of the McBain Ramblers who will take on these Cadillac Vikings later in the season. Those two teams will meet, I believe, in McBain on February 2nd. Boy, Hamlet's girls, those were some ballers, huh? Yep, absolutely. Meredith and Anne Marie, the second, third and second kids. Anne Marie, the middle child. Meredith, the youngest, playing at Valparaiso. Allen hits a huge free throw to make it a four point game. And they're going to say John's traveled. She took that little stutter step before she really had full control of the ball. That's a good call. Going for a quick steal for Cadillac. Full court pressure, trying to get a quick steal. And Johns will commit the foul. Hope Emmington in the area, but you don't really want Emmington to commit it. She's got four as well. Wildcats in the double bonus. So Alexis Smith will go to the line for two. Nope, sorry, that's, is that Schultz? Yeah. Jasmine Schultz, yep. the hair. If they'd all just have our haircuts, you could see their numbers a lot better. I am sure they are Schultz. very, very thankful. I try to offer my 13-year-old daughter my <laughs> skills, and she always turns me down. I can't no. figure that one out. Schultz's second offering is off the mark. Little pulls down the rebound. Little quickly up the court. Over to Canals to Emmington. Back to Canals. Back to Emmington. Puts it on the floor baseline. Lefty layup won't go. And Christensen needs to commit the foul. Well, you had to attack. You have to get a shot up. Uh, no sense passing around the perimeter. I mean, you have to attack. So you don't mind the shot. Um, but at this point, you probably do want to crash four or five. Yeah, and, it, and the layup, the, the drive by Emmington is, is a good play. Hope Emmington is five foot, not very much. And so getting that three-pointer off with a player in your face was going to be tough. It's a four-point game. You don't need a three right away. You right. need two buckets anyway. Right. And they can be a couple of twos. Why right. not attack the basket? And she did, and that was the right play. And make or miss here, you're still going to be in a two-procession game. So you want to bring the ball up, court as fast as you can, but you have to attack, attack, attack right away. Schultz makes the second. As Dezuris checks back into the game. Now, Caitlin Dezuris has not scored. She was, played a pretty big role in the first contest between these two teams. Emmington splits the defense up off the glass and battling for the rebound will get a jump ball. <laughs> Christensen and Canals, Canals <laughs> in <Yes>. there. <laughs> Steamroller. Morgan Canals comes out of that pile as if to say, I want nothing to do with that. Little picks it off. Nice move to get it to Johns, and they're going to get the foul. And that's huge for the Vikings because it sends Michaela Johns to the line with an opportunity to grab a couple of points without time coming off. 21.9 seconds remaining in this one. And give Alexis Little a lot of credit. That is a tough move backpedaling furiously to get that and get enough on it to get it to a teammate. She play cornerback with moves like that. Put her in the NFC Championship game this Sunday. I'm not sure what the discussion is if we're waiting to she foul out. Yeah. But that long ball has been right. there all night for Alpina and you know maybe went to the well one too many times on that. I don't know if in that particular up, up by five with 20 to go. I'm going to give know. Alexis little credit for baiting her into it. That's okay. what I'm going to say. The miss, and Christensen with the strong putback. And Coach Johns will call her final timeout. 18.9 seconds remaining in this one. And the Vikings have cut it to three, 49-46. This has been a wild one. Wildcats led by four at the half. Vikings stormed back in the third quarter to take a one-point lead. Wildcats jumped out with the first six of the fourth quarter to take the lead, and the Vikings have battled back here late with 18 seconds remaining, down by one. 
Wildcats two of 10 from the line through the first three quarters. And they have made six of 10 here in the fourth in order to maintain their lead. And it's Kylie Christensen who unofficially has 17 points in this game doing a yeoman's job down there on the block. Nicole Kleinsorge has fouled out. Hope Emmington is playing with four fouls. Jessica Marweed has fouled out, I believe, for the Wildcats. So this has been a physical game between these two teams. The Wildcats, five and one, trying to keep pace with Traverse City Central. Central five and oh, and I'm not sure. See, there's poor job doing my pregame. I'm not sure who Central has left from that first round through. It's been a very physical game, as you pointed out. I, I wasn't expecting that, and I haven't watched a ton of either team. Uh, but yeah, a lot of hands on balls, a lot of tie ups, a lot of reach ins. So here we go, Wildcats will inbound. And Christensen will immediately commit the foul on Caitlin Dezuris. And that, if you're the Vikings, can't be too unhappy. Dezuris has yet to score. So you would assume, you hope, maybe the free throw stroke is not quite yet warmed up. Well, it was she a two-shot two shot foul, so she gets two cracks at it. But this is a huge free throw right here because it makes it a one or a two possession game. So if you're Cadillac, hoping you can secure a rebound, you have no timeouts left. Got to get the ball into Hope's hands. Try and get a three ball up. The miss. Canals with the rebound. 15 seconds to go. Up ahead to Emmington. Emmington driving baseline. Throws up the lefty. No good. And we're going to get a foul immediately on Christensen on the rebound. And Christensen's committed three fouls in the last 30 seconds, and that's just your fourth. Well, not much changes other than a little more time off the clock, yeah, right? Yep. So it's exactly the same situation. <laughs> Stay eight left, eight seconds less as Dezuris goes to the line. Back irons the first. However, this time I think it would be imperative to try and put a three ball up if you secure this rebound. Well, yeah, I think you don't have much of a choice now. And Dezuris hits a huge free throw to make it a four-point game. And now if you're the Wildcats, Kevin, you stand at that three-point line, arms raised, and you don't go anywhere near anybody if you can help it. Nope, you just absolutely stand there. Wildcats will call the timeout. Because the clock's not going to stop even if Cadillac hits a bucket. So Nope. The only thing you don't want to do is foul them. Right. And you move to 6-1. and one in the conference. This would give the Wildcats their eighth win on the season, a year after only putting up five. So the Wildcat program doing a great job over there on the other side of the mm -hmm. world, mm -hmm. otherwise known as the east side of the state. Yeah, I expect a whole lot of Makes the trip home a lot happier. Sure, does. yeah, that's a, that's a long, <laughs> three and a half? I think it's like three hour bus ride. My goodness, yeah. that is a long trip. I live in Cadillac. If my kids get into sports and I'm traveling in the big north, you will oh be going to Alpine. Oh boy, I'm going to drive a Eric will tell a Prius, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> Give Eric me Wattilla. that 50 miles to the gallon, son. That's a great segue. Eric Wattilla, our director, want to make sure we uh, Give him a little love, as well as our camera crew, Wyatt Van Dyne and Rain Johnson Hill and Dakota Pike. Those young men doing a great job bringing you the images of this contest here on My News 26 Sports. Hey, I want to let you know, Cadillac Casting Incorporated uh, allowing us to even start this sports program. And we got to give them thanks here. Eight seconds remaining. Emmington quickly up ahead to Canals. John, step back, three ball, front iron. And that is how this one will end. 50 to 46, the Alpena Wildcats escape with the victory and move to six and one in the Big North Conference. We will collect some stats and be back with some final thoughts on this one. Your girls Big North game of the week here on My News 26 Sports post game show coming up in a moment. 